Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calderness. This episode, me and Simeon are watching the watch list, talking about some crazy rare, one of a kind, maybe figures that Hero uh, that Wiz Kids put up for auction, and answer a Malcolm Rush question block. This is episode 330. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. <laughs> My, 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 my stuff. ILH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in my studio is co host Nemesis, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, just uh, inner circle things. Oh, we're still on that? Yeah, it really took it out of me. I thought it was putting that watch laughing. list together. Hey, oh, yeah, putting the watch list together. Yeah, you got I, some of it. I missed a couple figures, apparently. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I try and make this world a better place for you behind the scenes, like some sort of Oz dictator man. It's just what I do. Can't believe you guys don't appreciate it. Nice, nice guy. I really appreciate uh, the watch list of Black Widow. Uh, and Captain Marvel. Those are like the biggest ones for me. I really hope you guys nerf those in the ground. Just make them unplayable, honestly, because I don't really like Black Widow that much. She has the shifting focus versions are fine and the bike is fine. So yeah, just like totally nerf this one in the ground. Just that'd be fantastic. I think that would be great. Like if you could make her unplayable, like how you pretty much <laughs> made Unimine unplayable, like that would be awesome. And uh, people can argue with me about Unimine not being playable or whatever. Um, save that for Dan Powell, but less I, I, I really do <laughs> much less playable. Um, I would love it if you could just make them like completely unplayable. That would be that would be fantastic for me, for me as a person. So let's uh, get into what made us happy this week was was putting together the watch list with you and your inner circle buddies. Was that was that fun? No, no, no. That what made you happy? What made me happy? That's that's work, was right? Making you open a box. Ah, okay. <laughs> So I have this box in front of me that says no open, do not open. Simeon told me he would have to wait. I have to wait until he uh, tells me to open it. If you watched my mail call video on YouTube, I got a package from Simeon. Now I'm going to open the box. So cutting the tape. This, this is uh -oh. great audio. Uh -oh. All right, that's the tape. I can hear it. This is the top coming off. Feeling this... Uh, know what this is yo -ho -ho! yeah these are sick oh my gosh ah ha! Ha! I, they're they're tiny hats <laughs> so well i didn't see that until i turned it around that is sick sick okay so what i'm holding everybody are custom dial h for hero clicks dice and this is so this is so boss you have no idea i will post uh pictures to the show wow but the the six is our logo and the pits on each side are little cowboy hats and that is awesome simeon oh my gosh that is amazing yeah there's enough so, there so uh calder will be able to keep a couple sets and then uh he'll be yeah. able to decide what he wants to do with the rest or maybe he'll just keep all of them I don't think I'll keep all of them. Give some away on Patreon. Sure. For sure. But yeah. Uh, wow. We'll These to, are awesome. Yeah. You'll have to check our Facebook too. page so you understand what they look like because uh, it's hard to describe oh my over God. audio. Beautiful. They're, they are great though. Ah, oh, it's so sick. All right, man. This, this already... So I already had something planned up for what made me happy this week, but this kind of like beats it. I mention it anyways because it's hero clicks related but dang this is so cool thank you simeon so much this is so boss oh my gosh yeah just so so i uh i'll go into a little like a little sappy oh, spiel yes. here yeah. um calder invited me to be on the podcast a long time ago it feels like it's not that long ago but um and i never really like did a good thing to like thank him and so yeah i had these i had these dice custom made 
by somebody that'll be on the podcast next week, actually, um, Mr. Stand Up. So you can you can check out his Facebook page. He's got a lot of custom dice stuff, but uh, it will also be doing an interview with him about his process. But yeah, I I don't I really wanted to do something to uh, show Calder that I really appreciated him having me on and. I really appreciate like the community that we have and everything that we're doing. That is so amazing. Well, thank you so much, man. The, the detail on these is incredible too. Like, ah. Oh. oh yeah, he did an awesome job. I so I unboxed him a couple weeks back, and yeah, like I was messing around with some of them and stuff, and I think that they're one of my favorite sets of dice I've ever seen. They're just there's a lot of cool stuff going on. Yeah. Oh, these are so epic. Oh my gosh! All right, I can't, I can't go like gush over these the entire episode, but I'm like, wasn't a crit hit, but you know, you can never guarantee. <laughs> you don't All even right. want them to be a crit hit though, because then you get to see all the little hats. That's true. Yeah, the little hats is great. So like, <laughs> now we have dial H dice that have the logo on the six two guys. So for those that have dial H dice with the logo on the one, you can like have these now, which is great. Dude, the hats are so cool. I love the hats as the pips in the dice. That is so sick. I love it. And they, they're that cool marbling effect. Ah, okay. That is so epic, though. All right. You know, whatever made me happy is gone. We can actually talk about in the <laughs> in the news. Uh, this is what made me happy now, because these dice are so dope. I love these. So thank you so much, Simeon. And I do appreciate that you appreciate the community and everything that we do here in the podcast, which is just awesome. So, all right. Moving on in the show with the news. This will be this will also count as news, um, but it's sort of what made me happy this week. But it wasn't like it's not as good as these dice. So uh, Thailand, here who's Thailand has been posting these pictures. I don't know if you saw these, Simeon, of the tournament they held. And it's just really cool. Like, I don't know what, if it's 300 modern or what it is. I'm seeing some pretty competitive stuff on these tables. You know, like I'm seeing some dark phoenixes. I'm seeing some dark sides, etc. And, but what I really like most about the hero clicks Thailand page is, the, um, I don't know. How do you say this? The, the artwork, the big banners and like, uh, cool table setups they have of hero clicks. Like over there, Hero Clicks is huge. You know, um, I should, should probably should have shared these to our Facebook. We should go check out the Hero Clicks Thailand page. So they held some kind of Hero Clicks tournament. I don't know if it was, I doubt it's a WKO, but probably some competitive tournament because there's pretty competitive figures being played and they're constantly posting updates about what round it is, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just really cool to watch people across the world more so than just like how there are small communities in Australia and like other countries besides America, Mexico, and Canada. You know, like any country besides that just is a really small uh, brew, it seems. Like the fact that these guys have bigger in store displays for Hero Clicks than any store in America pretty much has is amazing. And they're all custom made because they're all like brand new and they're not for any specific like set or anything. So it's really cool to like look at all the banners and like cardboard cutouts of big hero clicks figures it just it looks really awesome and it looks like such a pure beautiful hero clicks atmosphere they had some dice master stuff in there too but i really i really dig that i really dig what i've been seeing at the uh, hero clicks thailand but we can go ahead talk about what do you the figures simeon those ultra rare yeah uh figures that so, mr porter was talking yeah, about mr. here so scott porter did a uh, impromptu video uh it seems What's like that? back when i so i watched the video um apparently when he was sent the what would it it would have been fantastic four and spider-man at the same time i believe when he was sent those two sets they also sent him two convention exclusives that uh, no one has seen the actual sculpt of. We saw this, the 3D rendering of one of them. But, um, yeah, so he previewed just the sculpts for us, and uh, WizKids was kind enough to send him some extra goodies and stuff to put up for auction, uh, for a charity auction for Huntington's disease, which 
I think they already, yeah, they already sold and everything. So, um, yeah, good on WizKids. Good on Mr. Porter. Also, Scott Porter's on uh, Lucifer the next two seasons. So that's also exciting, but that has nothing to do with the news. Um, so, yeah, uh, the first figure that we already saw was the Cosmic Ghost Rider. It's Frank Castle as the Ghost Rider. So it's like Punisher, Ghost Rider, slash uh, Herald of Galactus. It's from one of the like far-fledged future stories where I believe Thanos is like ruler of the universe kind of thing. And Galactus is like somewhat defeated. Frank Castle's stuck on like a planet and he becomes a herald. And then he goes back in time to kill Thanos. And so it's also got baby Thanos like strapped to his chest. So it's a really cool sculpt. Uh, you can see it on Scott's video. You can also see the digital rendering somewhere. Uh, we had it for like a couple months. It's way, 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 way back. Um, and then the new one is just... I don't even know. Tell us about this guy, Simeon. So, Tell us about this beautiful, this colossal... Hopefully this actually gets a real release. That's the other thing is part of the video was Scott wasn't sure if these will actually ever be released since there were no, uh, effectively no real 2020 cons. Um, we have no idea if these will just remain in production indefinitely and never see the light of day. Um, or if we'll actually get actual figures for these. But the other figure that he showed us was a 2x2 two two for DC, which we don't get enough of those. And so it was a welcome thing. But it is the Fulcum Abominus from, uh, the I think it's the Justice League Dark. It appears for, I believe, like, a issue. And uh, it's just Power Rangers for the Justice League. It's just seven Justice League members like forming into a Power Ranger, basically. Um, there's more backstory to it than that, but really not a whole lot. It's just really goofy looking. Uh, me and Calder were looking at it earlier. It has a tiny, like the tiniest machine gun coming out of mm -hmm. its hip. Of it has the Flash's like leg because of the Flash's, you know, of course, got to be one of the legs. Has like two little like circular saw arms. So, like, his robot turns into a robot that's a leg, but also has tiny little, like, crab arms with blades. Um, Cyborg's an arm. Wonder Woman's got an arm. Aquaman has a leg. Green Lantern's in the middle somewhere. And uh, Batman, of course, is the head because he's the strategic one. And his right. doesn't shoot anything cool, so it had to be the head. Um yeah, it's just a really it's a really interesting sculpt. If you didn't like the Superman Batman robot, this will equally like be something that you hate because it's just like a weird it's probably worse than the Superman like just the way it looks. <laughs> Aesthetically, it's probably worse than the Superman Batman yeah, robot. The aesthetics are bad. I hate the um, yeah. If you're a huge fan of like Voltron or Power Rangers or like uh what is it, Super Sentai, uh whatever it was that Power Rangers is based on. I don't know. Um, if you're a fan of like that stuff, you might like how it looks. But yeah, it's like a Maybe. Frankenstein's monster of DC characters if they were robots. And uh, it's a two by two. It looks really cool. Um, sadly, we don't know what it does. We don't know the point costs. We just know the name and the fact that it probably yeah. has a retaliation click, I would imagine. Um, we kind of never will like what it does. Like, well, uh, you'll get to that. You'll get to that, I suppose. Yeah. Sorry. So it is possible that these will still be released. Um, it's up in the air. I have no idea what it depends on or anything just going off of Scott Porter's video. It's possible that they'll never be released. And these two are the only ones that'll ever be out in the wild. But uh, speaking of being out in the wild, uh, good old Scott Crampton from the Critical Clicks cast. Uh, you'll want to keep an eye on their Facebook page because he's going to eventually receive these, I believe. At least one of them, maybe both. I don't know exactly the details. But um, at the very least, it'll have a dial, I believe, 
If not, it'll just be the sculpt. I'm not sure exactly which, but we do know that it doesn't come with the cards. So um, these would never have been legal to play anyhow without cards and uh, being such a limited, limited release. But yeah, uh, if we can go through the dial, it'll be interesting. Uh, if he manages to like get a dial on them and we can see what like the stats and like point values and range and stuff will be. Sadly, we all have no idea what special powers or traits or anything like that do, which is always like, especially for cons, it's usually like one of the biggest highlights is the traits and special powers. But yeah, it's just a kind of like a weird, interesting thing out in the community that that just, it happened. And that was a thing. It exists. It uh, happened. It is cool that WizKids um, sent all that to Scott Porter and just kind of like gave it up for free for the auction, you know? So it was like their donation was whatever it would be it ran up to in the auction, which is nice. So it was cool. Well, not really. Their donation was whatever the product was worth. And then Scott Crampton's donation was what the uh, Heroclix got ran all the way up to. I am curious who else was um, Deep Pockets McGee running up Scott Crampton since we know... Uh, David Newark doesn't play anymore. Who is our regular, um, big spend kind of our regular million dollar man? I guess yeah. Well, that's the so, thing is, if someone was like uh, bidding on these to resell them, there's honestly there's like zero resale value in my opinion. Um, yeah, honestly, they yeah. are going to be a shelf piece, and for the price that uh, they got bid up to, they are going to be. You, you could almost have like a 12 to like 18 inch statue of either of these for the same price. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's for a good cause. So that's main reason why it got bid up so high, but also like, this is not something that will be up on eBay and like, they'll be making more money like later down the line. Um, if anything, it'll lose money because if the figures are released, then, you know, Everybody has one. I don't know. We're like, what would be cool is if you like made molds of each figure. So you could like wanted to give them to people if they wanted to like paint their own. Cause you have a sculpt at least. Maybe that's a morally gray thing to do. I guess make a mold of the character. Maybe you don't sell it. I don't know. If you like made a mold of it, like people that were dying to have a ghost rider, they could at least make a custom dial of it. Now they get like the sculpt. Cause all, all you have is the sculpt. Like that's it. Right you now. You could just say, I have the one original sculpt, make a mold of it. That's the cosplayer in me at heart is like, I like making molds of stuff. So that we would be could, fun. I mean, we could kind of like make guesses. Like if uh, the cosmic ghost rider has like a special speed power is top dial. We could probably be like, oh, it's got to be like hypersonic. He's on a space bike, right? It's got to be like some sort of hypersonic yeah. that lets you do stuff. And depending on like the points, we can look at figures that are like if it's similar to like the Silver Surfer, who's also a Herald, also Space Guy, can also like hypersonic. We can kind of make some like random judgment calls and form like a uh, impromptu card for these figures. But yeah, no, it is really cool. Um. I'm okay, I guess, with these figures being what they put up for auction because they're not Captain America. I don't need to own any of them. I feel bad for anybody that's like a Ghost Rider or Punisher fan that like need like would need to have that. Or for now, they just have an complete Ghost Rider or Punisher collection for like ever. For oh yeah, collection. somebody who's stuff. a huge fan yeah. of Fulcum Abominus. Oh, that not so much. My favorite character, you know, or someone like even a, even a Thanos fan, right? Like. Yeah. All Thanoses are already pretty expensive to get, and now you have like, ah, well, it's one baby Thanos I, I'll never be able to uh, <laughs> ever get, which is like a huge bummer. So a lot of people are going back and forth saying, like, these should never be released. Like, that's the way it should be. Um, pretty much if anybody but Scott would have gotten them, I might have agreed with you. But since Scott got them, release them. Just release the figures. Say now. Say, like, in the next week that you're just going to release the figures. <laughs> I would be okay with that, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'll love, I'll love Scott. Sorry, just, I'll love. They drop the previews before he gets them and just come. Oh my gosh, that would be parade. hilarious. Oh. It'd be so sad, but yeah, uh, sad, sad. Yeah, yes. sad. 
anyway, <laughs> anyways, so that was that. And that was pretty cool. That was something that happened this week. So we actually did have a little bit of news this week. That and watch list. That's right. This time of somewhat limited play, there are still figures that WizKids makes that are, uh, they just botched them. And by botched them, I mean they made them too good. So what's yeah. what's on the watch list here? Let me let me go over it really quickly. quarter three, 2020. Mania, baby. Yeah, quarter three. So here's watch list is a process by which if you don't know what the watch list is, let's go over this. They have a quick uh, description of like what the watch list does is what it's all about. So uh, this is a process which we identify figures and or other game elements we feel may have a negative impact on the game of Heroclix. Being on the watch list in and of itself is not an errata or change to these figures slash game elements, but rather an indication that these figures and game elements are under review and scrutiny and action may little I t- idolize there may be taken on the figure game element if we feel that it would be in the best interest of a healthy hero clicks gameplay environment actions that may be taken can range anywhere on the spectrum of no changes at all if we determine after reviewing we see little to no negative impact on the gameplay from a figure game element in question banning the figure and game elements if we determine after review there is no viable fix that would reduce or eliminate the negative impact of the figure slash game element yes please ban black widow i would be okay with that anyways as we are constantly evaluating each and every game element and its effect on the game of hero clicks we reserve the right to add figures and game elements to the hero clicks watch list at any time that we deem necessary however we also intend on making a quarterly assessment of hero clicks game elements that are currently tournament legal i.e current modern age report if any figures and game elements need to be reviewed for the health of the game so these are the figures that they're looking at now they've only ever banned one figure they've only ever banned felix faust and that's because he literally stopped you from doing well, literally anything that was a so, that was actually not a ban that was a uh, early retirement it's true that wasn't really retirement so yeah they've man- they have not banned a, any figures. That's my bad. that was after they like errated him once i believe right yes so. Yeah, they already ratted him, so like you couldn't prob his die and like other stuff like that. So, yeah, they have ratted him, and then they also made that one thing within six squares as well. So if you don't know Felix Faust, ah, we're not going to go into it. But anyways, he was real bad. He was real bad there for a while. Yeah, so the figures, with so yeah, they really, I don't think they, they have a banned figure. A single might, dice. I might be wrong, but, yeah, but I don't think they have banned a figure. So I mean, to my knowledge, like again, like I haven't been in the game since the the very beginning but to my knowledge um yeah, yeah they've never fully banned anything there's been stuff that wasn't like modern legal but i don't i don't remember anything yeah. being just like straight up like this is unplayable like if I, we want our community to be healthy all right so what are the figures that are on the ban list so we already had this up on facebook and twitter but for those of you that want to hear it out it is the a WizKids Prize, Tri-Sentinel, X-Men Animated Series, Iceman, Captain America and the Avengers, Captain Marvel Super Rare, Black Widow movie set, Chase Black Widow, the Fantastic Four Chase, Valeria Von Doom, and the Spider-Man and Venom Absolute Carnage, or sorry, Super Rare, Venom Groot. So, kind of some reasoning, uh, what figures, why they're on here. Yeah. So, uh, well, let's start. Just going let's go by the, the bottom. List. If you know because anything about the I, like, list, there's one of these yeah, that doesn't fit. Like, oh, that's why. All of these do yeah, that's true. free damage in some way, quote unquote free damage in some way, except for Iceman. Um, but starting, you said starting from the bottom? Start from the bottom because the top two, there's more for me to like talk. Oh, that's cool. You hover your mouse over yeah, the yellow part. I, saw that. Up. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Freaked me out at first. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that did scare me. All right, sorry. Yeah, let's go from the bottom up because I have a lot to say about the Colossals. Okay. Um, so, because there's, yeah. From bottom up, we'll do these two at the same time because um, first is Venom Groot. He's a super. He's 35 points. He's not unique. He's got four range. He's tiny size, poison, all that stuff. Uh, symbiote call and help from the Venom verse. He also can be brought back from light or from the dead, stuff like that. Um, but that's not why all of that is like standard stuff that's in sets and is normal. The reason why he's on here 
is the same reason, and I imagine it's only because this other figure's on there, and that's Valeria Von Doom. So her big thing is the, uh, let's see, yeah, hunting anomalies from the other world's trait, which for Venom Groot is his special fly traps and vine snares uh, power. So Venom Groot can actually, his can be outwitted, but Valeria Von Doom's is a trait, so it cannot be. But uh, it is basically when an opposing character, and I'll read Valeria Von Doom's version, when an opposing character is placed within four squares in line of fire after resolutions deal them one penetrating damage. That on its surface is not bad. We have uh, Spiderling, who was similar for similar points, but it was only when like Colossal Retaliation was activated. So it's something that like you would think would be around Colossal Retaliation or something like that. Venom Groot's version of the trait is when an opposing character is placed within four squares of Venom Groot, choose one, modify that character's attack minus two this turn, or after resolutions, deal that character one penetrating damage. If that character occupies printed hindering terrain, choose both. So... The main thing is when Venom Groot does his, it just says is placed within four squares of Venom Groot. And when Valeria does it, it says uh, is placed within four squares and line of fire. So um, Groot actually gets around having to see the character that's placed. So he can do this around like walls or through walls, um, through other characters. Valeria, you have to be kind of more careful with it. And the biggest problem with this is it actually becomes a very good offensive tool with how many figures and abilities we have to move opposing characters. So so we'll just go... The main reason I believe it's on here is on your turn, if you're playing a Valeria Von Doom, there's two different rings that allow you to move an opposing character. One does a force blast that knocks back a character one square. Uh, the way knockback is worded in the pack it counts as like placement. So it calculates the squares and then you place each square checking to see if they hit something first, which means if you force blast somebody and you knock them back four squares and all four squares are the, are in line of fire of Valeria, they take one penetrating, then they move one square, they take one penetrating, they take another, they, they get a penetrating damage for each square they move through because it's place and then check to see like if, there's a wall or elevated or whatever, and then place and then continue. Um, so that's one of the big things is you can use it offensively. Um, there's the spin ring. I mean, this is all like competitive kind of like talk, but you can use the spin ring, which just says place an, a, like a character within three squares uh, into an adjacent square. So the spin ring is just placing them and that's for free. There's the uh, two by two magneto that can do it. Um, you could technically TK somebody like an opposing character and that's placing them. Of course, generating figures is placing them. Uh, trouble alerts is placing, um, troublemakers, uh, retaliation, all of that's placing. And if it happens within four squares of Groot or four squares in line of fire of Valeria, it's a good defensive thing. Uh, but I think yes. the problem that they're looking at is like, the two rings, the influence and the spin, uh, anyone that can do like force blast. Uh, I think it's really cool with the WWE slingshot where you can actually like throw them in a direction that you pick. So that's another thing that like probably doesn't help. So in my opinion, if they're going to fix this, which I honestly don't know if I think it's broken enough for them to fix because I feel like you have to invest like a decent amount into your team. Not really, but probably I'll say like 50, 60 points at least. So like about a third, no, that'd be a hundred. Um, I don't I, About a fifth of your build. I think if you really want this like trait to really kick off, um, but it can also just be like Valeria plus spin ring and then you just have that option, like, the whole game. And uh, the spin ring especially gets around Colossals not being able to be knocked back. So 
that's a big one. But yeah, anything that like lets you place uh, Magneto, stuff like that, it just becomes a really good offensive tool. And it's kind of like Shredders, um, just makes invincible and protected penetrating damage really big, really important. Makes uh, single click figures almost like obsolete in a meta yeah. where they're allowed. Well, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. So I really don't have much input for Larry Von Doom and Venom Group, but like that is what they do. They have a huge impact on the game. So yeah, it totally makes sense why they're on the watch list. So I guess I have to talk about Black Widow, sadly, as much as I don't want yeah. to and I hate her. So Black Widow does a lot of things. For 130 your build, she can do a lot of stuff. The problem is is how much she does for free and how much is also just passive. So Probably, I would say her biggest one is her first trait, which is uh, espionage patience. So Black Widow is on a theme team. She has Avengers and Spy. Or your starting force has two other characters with the Black Widow movie sets symbol. So Avengers is a great keyword, obviously. Uh, Spy, not so much. But Avengers being a strong keyword, I don't have to tell people how strong Avengers is. So yes, she's normally on a theme team. Almost always. Pretty much always on a theme team. Um. Standard friendly characters can't have their attack rolls of 10 or more re-rolled. Opposing characters targeting those characters can't have their attack rolls of 4 or less re-rolled. This is insane. It is a map-wide effect. Uh, it does not require line of fire or anything from Black Widow. She could be all the way in the back. And it does. This only stops when she dies. And she's already kind of hard to kill. So you can't re-roll. Any, anyone's attack value that is a four or less. So if you crit miss, man, bro, that sucks. Even if you have prob, even if you would spend the theme prob, can't re-roll it, bro. That that sucks to suck, man. So yeah, it's horrible. This is this is probably the worst. And I mean, if they crit hit, it's just it's you're, it's useless. You literally can't do anything. You're like, oh well, I guess uh, so I'm taking an extra one. You know, like that's that's all it is. But that is probably the most like like things she does but don't worry she does more so she is her second trait is opportunity which gives her traded stealth starts the game with five trade cap tokens just like uh, phil colson and fury from captain marvel free remove a trade craft token to choose an opposing character within six squares and line of fire until your next turn that character can't use a standard power until it's displayed on their dial as colored square and can't have their combat values positively modified so any pick a power figure or figure that has equipment that gets a power from the equipment right can't use any of those powers they can only use what's on their dial they also can't have their combat values modified now i would have loved if this figure would have came out on a certain you know mind creature of certain eternal you know eternally living people together and then made that mind creature like that would be really cool if she existed in the same timeline he did and got played at the same time he did but she didn't so the character she's the best at nerfing at doesn't really like affect too much but this is still a super crippling trait i mean there's still plenty of pick a power figures figures that gain powers from traits or special powers so yeah. even if you have a special power you can't use it because it's well, not for, a colored square for 100 points it completely nerfs 90 percent of uh dark sides like dial his, right his oh, entire yeah, defense too, yeah. of like impervious on a 50 50 and it's being gone. able to reduce penetrating damage and protected pulse wave she just gets rid of that because uh it's not a colored square it's a it's a white box this really affects more than you think just by the fact it also gets rid of special powers too so that is huge. Now that is a you have to remove a token for it, and you need line of fire. But it's still it's still insane. Maybe I would say you could choose one or the other. You know, can't have their combat values modified. Can't uh, can't use powers unless they appear on dial. Maybe maybe not both. That would be a very soft way to fix that power. Then she also has a, a stop click. This isn't big deal phil colson and nick fury have these it's whenever this power is first revealed you remove all of her tradecraft tokens you heal her that many clicks that's not a big deal i don't think so anyways her second biggest thing is her special damage power she has for the first two clicks which is web of intrigue leadership and outwit so on top of like all this stuff she has she also just has like leadership and outwit too which is pretty insane 
a free remove a tradecraft token to generate a Black Widow movie set symbol 003 Widow Initiate or uh, 006 Widow Recruit on a click one. So you just straight up get to bring a character from outside the game. Biggest thing here, though, is they are characters with a printed three damage and uh, one has poison, which can choose a character or a team symbol, I believe. And then you can do penetrating damage to them. So Black Widow for free on her turn and make you not use any of your powers can outwit any powers you do have and let you not use any um, combat value modifiers. Your stats can't be up. You also bring in a character after being, this is all after being, let's say, carried up all the way across the map. You can then bring in a character, which can then penetrating poison you and punch you if, if she wanted it to as well. You can do all of that for free. Also giving a static plus one action for her whole team. And, and that, if I roll a 10 or higher, you can't re-roll it. That quote-unquote free character has two rollouts and like average Roll combat outs. values yeah. for something that's just quote-unquote generated. It does have a point value. It's 25 points. But for no, something that just comes in, uh, it's got yeah. a lot of stayability. I think a great thing would be just make her only have two tradecraft tokens. I think that would be a great nerf for her. That would be fantastic, personally. Yeah. Um, anyways, but like... That is what she does. She does an insane amount for free. Not to mention that offensively she has stealth and combat reflexes. So you like you can't outwit her unless you see through stealth. Uh, you can't really punch her close type of deal. Um, she also ignores hindering terrain for movement line of fire. She also is a running shot with a twelve of attack, three Second damage. Blast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with end blast. So like she also has way better than normal combat values. She's probably. Um, one of the best hundred points you can spend in the game right now. She's also then, like pseudo don't die back with her whole stop click and healing. Like, um, I've seen teams like that player, and there's a lot of different ways you can play this figure. But if you play her with one of the shifting focus Black Widows from the same set, who also has Avengers, um, you also get all of their espionage powers. So the common zero zero one Black Widow just says. Uh, if she's on a theme team or your starting force has two other characters from Black Widow movie set, opposing characters can't use improved targeting abilities to target her or adjacent friendly characters. So if you're playing this Black Widow with that 75 point shifting focus one, then not only is she in stealth, but just as long as she's next to that other Black Widow, uh, no one can shoot through stealth except your team. So yeah, there's... There's a lot of reasons why this Black Widow uh, could be on this list. And I haven't played with it or against it enough to say like what would be a good improvement. I think Kari, Sam Kari Sampson uh, commented on like one of our uh, questions a while back with like what he would have fixed. And that seemed pretty reasonable to me when I was reading that. Uh, but yeah. I don't know. These movie sets, sometimes they're hit and miss, and sometimes they're just like... Sometimes they're just, like, you know, absolutely awful. Yeah. Like, what, what you guys did to Civil War? Ah, oh, unforgivable, really, WizKids. Making Civil War so terrible like you did, and not even having the full cast and crew, which is awful. Making, really, even worse than Civil War, I would say, Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok yeah. being a straight banger of a movie, like a freaking awesome movie... You reuse everybody twice and, and make them all just kind of lame. Can you and, imagine you know, if bad. instead of Black Widow being able to do all this stuff, if like she had a power that was like knockback free, if a character has been knocked back and is adjacent to Black Widow, she can make a free attack. Because that's what one of the Thors and Hulks did. They were like, huh. it was supposed like, to be this thing where you could hit an opposing character to Thor with Hulk and then Thor could yeah. hit it back. And like so, Thor got a free attack, and then he could do a knockback thing, and then Hulk got a free attack. Like you could bounce him, but it was just overcosted and it was bad. And then you've got this, yeah. which is, I mean, it's coming out like three years later, but still, for a hundred points, insane. it's uh, a lot of stuff. A lot so of stuff. Let's talk about uh, something that's even less points and also a lot of stuff. Um, coming in at the what is it, 90 point line, or is it 95? 95. 95 you can also for the low dial. 
Yeah, so yeah. Captain Marvel has two dials. Most people won't know this, but uh, yeah, top dial <laughs> is 150 points. Pretty solid dial, uh, very reminiscent of other 150-point figures we've seen, like the 150-point uh, Wolverine Headmaster. Thankfully, she didn't have a 50-point version, um, but she she has a 95-point version with two stop clicks, two clicks of a special speed power that is hypersonic speed when Captain Marvel uses it after resolutions deal one penetrating damage to an opposing character she moved through. If that character is a vehicle, deal it three penetrating damage instead. I uh, don't see a lot of vehicles in play usually, but it's a very cool uh, movie kind of scene, like reminiscent kind of thing where she like flies through okay. Thanos's ship. Um, I actually don't think this character is as bad as the ones that we've previously listed because one of the things about this character is she actually has to like engage with you. She can't just be kind of like off to the side to like ruin your day she does have to like get up close uh so she does have a lot of other stuff going on uh she has the assembled avengers trait which most of the avengers and uh masters of evil and thunderbolts also had which is on a five through six if your force had three plus friendly characters with the avengers keyword you could either remove an action token from the character that hit or give an action token to the hit target, and then if you had, your force had six or more, you could do both. I don't know how often that trait ends up mattering, but it's a cool trait regardless. Um, she can also make the Gus, uh, the Flurkin cat, um, and that's free once per game. You generate Chewy bystander. He has perplex, uh, giant reach blades, flurry. I think super senses. I'm not hundred percent sure. I'm not looking yeah, at the yeah. cat right no, now. Super um, and then, yeah, her two stop clicks are stop invincible and protected outwit, uh, capital protected outwit. So not just the defense power, the whole, whole figure on those two stop clicks is protected outwit. So she does another thing that like, I mean, the last three characters we talked about do, and that's free penetrating damage. Oh, I think yeah. this character out of the last three that we talked about is probably the best costed for the ability to do that she also can't do it her whole dial which uh valeria it's traded groot you could potentially outwit it but it's his whole dial she only gets that ability on uh her top click and her bottom click unless you're playing her at 150 and then she's got a few she's got two extra clicks where she gets it but honestly um the the real like reason this is on a list is because it gets played with that Black Widow to yeah very good effect. Uh, you have oh, yeah. you know one or two of these Captain Marvels, the Black Widow, and then you've got two probs. Your opponents can't prob. You have two perplexes with the cats. Um, this is one where I I don't know what they change about this figure unless they just want to slap a unique ring on it, which I think is fine. I don't think that that yeah. ruins it. You can still play plenty of other uh, Avengers stuff with it. Um, I personally think either unique ring, see a unique ring and um, making it a power action to bring out Chewie. Yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. I, think. I could see that because yeah, that is one of her, one of like the I think big things okay. is you can, I, I think that would just be enough, right? If yeah. we just did like a power action to bring out Chewie, even without the unique ring, I think that would be enough to like make her, a little more balanced. Yeah. Now. So one Could of the big wrong, things but... is if you play two Captain Marvels and a Black Widow, uh, one Captain Marvel can carry Black Widow up nine squares. The other one can, or the Black Widow can then like outwit somebody, um, drop a Widow's Recruit and like poison them. And then Chewie can flurry. Uh, Captain Marvel can drop Chewie and flurry. Then the other Captain Marvel can fly up with hypersonic and deal a penetrating damage and attack and then drop another chewy and do another flurry blades so yeah it is kind of bad that uh, she can drop the chewy bystander for free but jason wingard can also do that and he's not on the list so i don't know if that's something they're gonna look at yeah that's probably really not what they're looking at it's more so like the penetrating damage yeah really and i again i mean we've also got uh you make it a power so many characters that can do too, penetrating though. damage. Um, yeah. The Johnny Storm from the fan, uh, the Fantastic Four starter, 
can also like he's a little bit more. But once again, it's because they pay attention to tournaments, even these online tournaments and everything. He doesn't see nearly as much play because defensively, for twenty points less, yeah, is like nothing compared to Captain Marvel defensively. Um, and then he has to running shot with it, so it's way harder to pull off a running shot, move through somebody, and still be able to running shot. Or I guess he can just move through someone too. I guess he doesn't have to running shot, but still, she can make an attack and do it. You know, with a hypersonic. But yeah, yeah. It's yeah. He's he doesn't have the same reach, and uh, he's uh, for the points. He does a lot less. There's no bystander generation. He doesn't fit on as many uh, themed, or he doesn't have as many theme team like options as she does with the uh, Avengers. Fantastic right. Four is decent, but if you're dropping one of your 75 point characters for free damage, and he's got like you know one stop click instead of two, he's not you know hypersonicing. He's not probing. He's not doing a lot of things that Captain Marvel does. Exactly. Now let's, All let's right. get to the figure that makes the least sense to me. I understand so we got why it's here, but... X-T-A-S, uh, good old X-Men set. Iceman, baby! So, Iceman, Colossal Retaliator is pretty much the only line he is played at. What does it say? Well, I'll tell you in a second if my fingers can type just a little bit faster. He Colossal used to be Retaliation. played at 100 sure on an ID card. Yes. Used to. That was a fun Used time. To be able to that. It was cool. I did like being able to call him in and have him charge and never pulled it off. I know? didn't like Adam it when I, when I ran okay. my Wendigo Swarm the one time Windigos? and almost lost uh, in a yes. single turn to an ID, a three-point oh, ID card. Three-point ID card. Don't you miss ID cards, Simeon? Don't you just... Oh. Don't you just I actually miss... That? The thing I do miss about him is the ability to finish a build with just like one quick five-point thing. I miss yeah, that because now I have to be like, I have like uh, points like, less, and I'm like, because I could play, I could play like 20 games and never give up that five points. But now, if it's like a ring or whatever, I mean, if they KO my whole team, I give it up. But you know, if it's if it's an actual object on the field that I'm filling my team out with, then it's another thing that they can score potentially. But anyhow, all right. So Iceman, though, uh huh. Ha, Iceman. All right. So, a free. If no friendly character has been placed this turn, choose an opposing character that attacked Iceman or damaged a friendly character since your last turn, period. That part doesn't really matter. I hate to say it, guys, but we'll get into why that doesn't matter anymore. It sucks, but it doesn't matter. Anyways, place Iceman such that he can make a close combat attack targeting the chosen character, and then do so. That part also doesn't matter. This part is the part that matters, and probably what they're looking at him for. It's after resolutions, he can immediately use in-cap at no cost, but may target smaller characters. So, I don't know how many people were playing Iceman to warrant this not a lot. You know, he's got champions, defenders, X-Factor, X-Men. Probably the most useful is armor, just because he can then be Spider-Man family with Penny, right? Like, it's got to be the most useful one out of all of those. So yeah, anyways, because your typical armor, I think, is... Nope, that's robot. So I don't even yeah. know of an armor team that's doing well right now. But yeah, the reason why is the same reason, the same main reason why Tri-Sentinel is on there. And uh, if this was prior to the Mighty Thor rotating, there would have been some other ones that made the list too. But, uh, yeah, it comes down to wording and less about actual use. The whole thing, the after resolutions, WizKids ruled a while ago that whatever happens after the resolutions, even if there wasn't an attack made... So basically it's saying, if I were to try to, uh, this is basically how it works, take an object attack, like I pick up a light object, I'm going to throw it at somebody. After resolutions of any object attack, the object is destroyed. Now let's say they hit a shape change roll and there's no other valid targets. Well, now I can't even make an attack. What happens to the object? Rule that still gets destroyed. So that means the after resolutions effect will still happen even if there is no target. Which is super weird, 
because that means your Colossals can now walk up, even though they're supposed to retaliate, they can now retaliate against nothing because nothing bad has happened to you yet. They can just go ahead and walk on up and say, blah, 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 after resolutions, and then in cap you. And you're like, are you serious? You didn't do yeah. all that first stuff. And they're like, yeah, I don't have to because it's this way. Yeah. So don't basically, need to fix these things. Right, I mean, go for I, it. I actually really like the way WizKids has the order of operations. If you read through like the rules and you get the rules down pat, the order of operations that they do is pretty okay. Um, the problem comes when you give somebody free like anything and then they have a period after resolutions, you do this. Because that means I can be carried, I can be TK'd and like walk 12 squares I can I can do whatever and then I can activate that free action afterwards just like Captain Marvel dropping the cat I can do whatever and then I can free action and then even if that free action doesn't give me anything if the after resolutions is what I'm looking for um, so in this case Iceman like walks five squares uh, activates free and just completely ignores all the free stuff that free action ends, and then you move on to the after resolutions effect, uh, which would include all after resolutions effect, but his is the most important, which is he can immediately use in cap at no cost, but may target smaller characters. So ignoring the uh, colossal indifference thing. Um, on Iceman, it's it's the least busted on Iceman, but the problem comes in in like the next figure and Surtur and Mangog and all the all the other colossals that have these free things. Uh, some of them have them as power actions. Some of them just don't have the after resolutions wording. It's literally just, there's no after resolutions. It's just like tacked into the free thing. So if the free doesn't qualify, then you don't get the rest of the stuff. And that's how some characters are, but they, they did it weird for a few characters and the way the rules work, um, yeah, they just left like this big loophole for a really long time. That is correct. And so really, Iceman and Tri Sentinel aren't the problem. I think they're designed perfectly fine. I know you didn't talk about Tri Sentinel yet, but before we even get into them, they are both designed perfectly fine. For their point value, I'm actually okay with both of them and what they do. The busted part is the whole targeting being able to do all this stuff without meeting their claws to even do that action. Call me stupid or whatever you want for more competitive people. But the fact that you can do this without meeting the first quota of that trait, you know, or whatever power it may be, is just busted. And I, I really hate it. So because Mangog, Surtur, and other Colossals still exist, and I love playing Golden Age, and I hate playing against those figures in their Modern Age, and I'm going to hate playing against those figures in their Golden Age, but prefer WizKids fix their order of operations, style, attack, and how after resolutions works. Because right now, um, especially even with objects and everything, it is, I would say, quite literally a broken game element. And by broken, not I mean busted and like really good. It physically doesn't work the way it should. It doesn't make sense. And I don't like it for that reason. Because it doesn't make sense that you should be able to do that. Yeah. Um, the if whole you reason... say I'm stupid or whatever, that's fine. <laughs> but like, it doesn't make sense. I, I think the whole reason you're getting these characters like at a discount for point value is because they have the caveat that like it's a retaliation effect. So the whole reason exactly. why there's all these uh, like 35 and under, I think 35 is like the highest colossal retaliator. I mean, there's I guess there's some full dial ones like uh, technically like Ghost Rider giant stuff. girl is or yeah her too. yeah. Giant girl can also be like up to 250 or whatever. Um, but the reason why you're typically getting these for a discount is because they come with the colossal indifference, which again, uh, Dark Phoenix didn't make the list and she also doesn't have colossal indifference. I think she might be a bigger problem than Iceman. Like, even oh, she's she, for sure a bigger, which she's definitely on way more teams than Iceman. Like, I, I don't get it, and man. Iceman wasn't included because of what he does. He was only included no, because he just shares because he's the, the only other. Sentinel. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I'd say Dark Phoenix on the right team is on par with uh, Tri Sentinel as far as effective, like, abilities and 
they kind of missed the mark on not giving her the indifference. Um, they also missed the mark on letting her heal, in my opinion. Um, so the main thing with Tri-Sentinel, and I think if this ruling had been made at Worlds of tw- in 2018, I think I might have... I might have made like top 16 because uh, my Tri Sentinel team was pretty good, but it wasn't walk uh, 10 squares up and then blow up everything in three squares and deal damage to everything within that area. Especially since like Worlds in 2018, um, Tri Sentinel had only been out for like a month or two. Most people weren't yeah. really playing it yet. And I came in with uh, three Tri Sentinels some jokers wild green lanterns uh sheriff strange and what was my other thing uh the shadow lady that from harley quinn that could uh nightshade she could zoop people around and stuff like that so uh the ability to walk so again like tri sentinels can like take a power action and walk eight squares and then they have sidestep so they can sidestep to 10 squares from their starting area from where they started. Um, and then they can activate free. If no other colossal retaliation power has been activated this turn, choose an opposing character, blah, blah, blah. doesn't matter because you weren't attacked or anything. You're just activating a free power because it's free. So you can activate it regardless of what says after free, you can just activate it. Uh, you don't get to play some, you don't get to do pulse wave, none of that. But what you do get to do is, after resolutions, destroy all blocking terrain within three squares. Which, if his pulse wave goes off, that's thematic. His pulse wave goes off, and then after resolutions, all that blocking's destroyed, because it's a big old pulse wave. And it destroys blocking. That's cool. I like that. Um, the problem with it is his speed power says uh, when he destroys one or more pieces of blocking terrain, after resolutions deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character that was adjacent to one or more destroyed pieces. So it doesn't stack, but if you're on the right map and building with Mystical or even Hellfire Club, I guess, to an extent, you could probably do Robot and Sentinel still with like the new sets. But just going off of uh, my 2018 experience... Mystical was an easy keyword to have a bunch of stuff. I think I only lost map once that like whole uh, Worlds tournament. And at the time, it was the Star Trek Underground map, whatever that one was. And so there's a, like plenty of blocking. There was only a few places where people could go that didn't have blocking. And they didn't really want to be there because then I can just put my... Uh, my green lanterns up there and pop down some free barrier and then activate this and deal them damage anyhow. So, um, this was not ruled on until I think like what, 2019 where like the whole ball began rolling with the walk up and do stuff kind of thing. So before it was, you had to like shoot the blocking with tri sentinel or walk through it because he has improved movement, destroys blocking, that kind of thing. There's like a lot of options and ways to do this damage without it just being a 13 square reach. Technically. Um, it's just a like really crazy reach. It also completely eliminates the use of barrier on some teams. If some like team is like, I don't really like barrier tech, but if some team, their whole like thing is that they're going to barrier in and protect themselves the ability to just walk up and wipe three squares of barrier away and potentially damage anyone that's next to it. That's pretty crazy, but yeah, it all comes down to that after resolutions trait or that after resolutions wording that, uh, just needs to be fixed because on the surface, try Sentinel, uh, if he doesn't activate this as free and destroy that blocking, even with that power, I don't think he's too oppressive. He's annoying that he can do that. Um, I haven't seen him being like crazy good because he's not protected outwit like a lot of Colossals are. So there's ways around it. You can outwit his speed power. You can outwit his attack power. You can do whatever and get rid of those things. But um, I like him on the surface. I like him as a retaliator. I don't like the fact that anything can walk 10 squares 
and then destroy another three square radius of blocking and just like wreck maps for free. That just seems, yeah, like a huge oversight. Uh, you a little bit, say. yeah. <clears throat> Did uh, watch him. You were at Seward Yes. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know how they fix that wording. If they just clear out the word after resolutions, and they say uh, free retaliation, place try sentinel that he can target a chosen character using pulse wave at no cost, then do so. Also destroy all blocking terrain within three squares. Instead of after resolutions, they just say, like they just jam it all into a run on sentence. I guess I don't know. I don't know how they do that. Run on sentence. WizKids barely understands English and math. You really think they're gonna? Why well, are you saying English? Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. I I would give you twenty five dollars right now. I would give you a hundred dollars right now if uh, a WizKids employee messaged me tomorrow saying they knew exactly what a run on sentence was. But with the internet, they could just Google it. So hmm. never. It's true. <laughs> think if I like. Walked into a term like, hey, can you tell me what an adverb is right now? Do you think they would know? <laughs> Judge. Maybe we could act. Judge. Judge. I need you to tell me what an Oxford comma does to a sentence structure. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's like, uh, is it after resolutions? Or is it... It's like, no, I am I just mean in general. I'm writing a letter yeah. to my mother. And yeah. I need to know... <laughs> chart out this sentence for me and it used to like chart out sentences in english you know where it had like that weird branch like tree thing you would like chart out the sentence what was that actually called ever do that i have no idea what you're talking about i haven't no, been no, you're talking about. Oh, that's fair it's been a decade yeah. oh, uh, you don't need to do that <laughs> you don't need to do that since i've seen a school <laughs> door oh geez that's you've seen all right let's get past it that's the watch list ladies and gentlemen Lots of stuff going on there. Uh, we've been going on for quite a bit, and then we just had a, a minute and a half tirade about uh, English and then the school system. So let's let's move on into some community. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Community Tuesday's question this week uh, with the straight banger of a meme that you guys let fail on both Facebook. Oh, Twitter, five likes is pretty good on Twitter, sadly. Twitter's pretty sad in general. Anyways, Community Tuesday's question, what is your favorite generic keyword, Simeon? What's your favorite generic keyword? I actually really like, and we might do this um, generic gallery episode or something. I really like uh, the ruler keyword, or not ruler, sorry. Um, it goes around like ruler, but the deity keyword. Oh, sure. And so... I don't know if we got many people say that keyword, actually. That's, that's a little unique, actually. Deity, actually, so they've got a ton of like pretty solid figures. The only problem is you can't run the theme team unless you're doing close to like a 500 or 600 point game. So some of the cheapest sure. deities that we've got uh, in recent history is like the 85 point rune, the 85 point chase uh, Avengers, 10 million BC black Panther. Um, other than that, it's usually like a hundred points and up. So uh, all of the super rares, from Avengers Infinity, the two by twos, except for Groot, but Lord Chaos, Infinity, Eternity, Living Tribunal, those are all deities. So in HeroClix language, it's either somebody that's like worshipped as if they were a deity, or it's somebody that has like some sort of godlike power. So that usually falls to like uh, like Galactus. Um, surprisingly, I don't think. Yeah, Udemine didn't get it, but all the other Eternals did, I believe. Or no. Yeah, all the other Eternals got it, I believe, except for Unimind, which is just kind of weird because he's like the the best Eternal of all of them or whatever. Um, but it's also a keyword that tends to go towards DC more than Marvel, in my experience, because uh, Wonder Woman's like rogues gallery tend to be more deity-esque kind of figures. And that hasn't been the right. case in like the last couple sets. We've gotten barely anything. But if you go back to Superman Wonder Woman, one of my favorite characters ever is the Hades super rare. So mm, yeah. he's just a tiny little man sitting on a throne. The, the it's chair, a weird yeah. sculpt. He's like sitting in like a lap of a tortured soul or something. 
Um, he's also a bystander generator, which is my like main reason for liking him. But if you just parked him and you like let the game progress, if it was like a 600 point game or something and you didn't really need him to do a whole lot, he also has 10 range, so he doesn't have to be right up in the fray. He can just like stack these bystanders that pop out when characters are KO'd. So if it's someone 100 points or less, you get the suffering soul. And then if it's 100 points or more, like 101 points or more, you get the heroic soul. And the heroic soul was like charge, super strength, uh, impervious, and prob. And so I remember there was like one game, there's like a high point game where I just had this guy in the background. And towards the end of the game, I had like six, because it was a battle royale style. So I had like six uh, heroic souls just like sitting around with their 18 impervious prob. And I was just like, yes, this is great. I don't know what I'm doing anymore, but, like, look at all this stuff I have. Um, 11 attack, 3 damage, yeah. But, yeah, anyhow, uh, I think deity is, like, an underused keyword. I also really expected it to show up in WWE with maybe Undertaker, um, like, maybe The Rock. Like, I get they just got, like, Celebrity or whatever instead, but... I feel like when you like are the people's champion, the most electrifying man in all of sports entertainment, or an undead wizard who can control the souls See, of those he's eaten, you maybe get the key, the deity keyword. But, you will uh, get mystical. You'll be happy about getting yeah. mystical. That will be that will be the most we can give. You know who really should get it though is as much as I I mean I I hate this human being. Um, if he couldn't super easily beat me up in a fight, I, I would punch him in the face. But uh, Seth Rollins, maybe, for Monday Night Messiah okay. could potentially give a deity keyword. See, I was thinking uh, Finn Balor, because he's also got, like, the... But that, but that the, fits more with Monster, because he's, like, the demon. Yeah, more with Monster mystical-style uh, stuff. A fun modern figure that has it is someone from the Orville set. Commander Kelly Grayson from the Orville has deity keywords. Isn't that oh, she's cool? Deity. Didn't know that. Yeah. Or why? Uh, there's an episode. So Calder loves hearing about Star Trek sort of episodes. So there's an episode where they find this planet that like has it exists in a different time whatever bubble than we do. So everything that happens on that planet is happening at like 500 times the speed that is happening on the ship. Like every couple of days on the ship there's like a little blip in the planet like zooms like 500 years in the future. So they go wow. on like a reconnaissance mission or whatever. And uh, Kelly Grayson has to like save this dude's life using her advanced technology to heal him. Cause he gets injured. And then she comes back to the ship and the planet like bloops and it's 500 years in the future. And then they go back down and there's like statues of her because she was like, I, I don't know. She like went down and like healed some dude and then got beamed up to her alien ship. So they just, assumed she My was gosh. like some sort of god and yeah She's it's, it's pretty fun it's a good uh good episode it's people funny. that haven't watched the orville should give it a shot it's uh it's not half as bad as it could be all right well we already had to do a bunch of things i hate which Ugh. is uh Josh, talk about the orville Josh for way too also has it what the heck Ugh. why I don't know. Do you, I don't know why that Joss Whedon is so good. People for a long time were like, oh, Joss Whedon's the best. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, 40 points Bell deity. Yeah. One of the worst 200 plus He's points. He's got a special play. power, horrible doctor. That's probably the most. Uh, get it? Yeah, it's probably it, the uh, most uh, honest thing. Literally just, style. It's literally just Blades Claws fangs, though. Like, <laughs> yeah. really, it's, you make a support role against an opposing character, then you can, instead of healing, you hurt them that much. And you're like, oh, so it's blades claws fangs all right all right anyways so simi thank you for your five minute deity yeah, answer really that was a really that. long explanation uh, of why I'm, i like my the answer dance. my answer is uh soldier uh that's it no well if i can go into it just a little bit if you would let me simian a soldier is pretty much you know captain america it's like the keyword that you can guarantee almost every captain america has and a lot of other super patriotic characters also gain the soldier keyword so I was starting out, I just wanted to play Captain America and a bunch of other people in Stars and Stripes. So that's like US Agent, um, Detroit Steel, Uncle Sam, uh, the comedians from Watchmen all have Soldier. Stuff like that. 
all the aim uh red white and blue dudes all have soldier as well so like soldier for me is just kind of like it's the most patriotic keyword in the game so i've always just enjoyed playing soldier purely for that reason and 1776 makes it even better because it's restored soldier to its former glory of being a named theme team again well, it was never a named theme team but it used to have theme team probs and stuff which was awesome and when they changed that it cut me deep they ruined my soldier keyword and now it is back to its previous glory. So, yeah. reading, I like, uh, I like the, some of the soldiers one. too. There's a red skull, nuke, uh, red onslaught yeah, nuke soldier. Is also a patriotic character. I was super um, happy when he got. Let's see, man, thank commander. <laughs> I just I wanted to like, like find like, as many never. Hydra guys, but I I had to scroll too uh, far. You scumbag. <laughs> you scumbag. All right. Anyways. Do you want to read the first one on Discord there, Simeon? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. Over on Discord, because I remembered this week to actually post it there. My bad, guys. Uh, Bonsai Tree, Tiemu, says, uh, I wish we had more pirates, but we can't sing the song because we will get demonetized. Copyright. Again, yeah. <laughs> we make any money on YouTube with this uh, podcast, but yeah. I didn't realize Larry was so hard up. Him and Bob must yeah. have had to take out like a second yeah. mortgage on the zucchini apartments or whatever. Yes, so well they live in the kitchen. You know that. Don't, don't be disrespectful, my man. Die in the kitchen. That's like, for sure. They, oh, geez. <laughs> geez. All right. Moving on to Twitter. Elijah Haynes. After pulling Spider Man 1776 in a blind booster, I have accepted the soldier keyword into my life. I'm glad to see you make that decision, Elijah. Very nice. Yeah. I'm going to read one on Facebook. And yeah, then I'll, I'll do pop a... over to Facebook with uh, Tyler Murin says, Mystical Robot Scientist is does Speedster count? Can't remember off the top of my head. Speedster is indeed one of the few uh, keywords that used to go between Marvel and DC. I mean, I guess it, it still technically does. Uh, we just yeah. hardly ever get it in Marvel. Um, of course, like all the flashes, anyone that has access to speed force typically gets the speedster keyword in DC, but in Marvel, it's, uh, very few, very few speedsters that actually get the yeah. speedster keyword. Hot minute since we've had the wizard and several other amazing Marvel speedsters. I guess I both guess... wizards, all three yeah. of them <laughs> on discord. We have uh, chance callers, Bane McCall. What a guy says past or mystical i used to mess with past a little bit past is kind of a fun keyword my first mystical ever, is obviously very uh my first ever like wko tournament team was a past theme team it had right. uh two ameridroids two jokers wild green lanterns uh devil dino a bunch of like fun stuff has passed not enough future okay. Future doesn't get. Oh yeah, as much I know. It used past. to be a huge past because, like, him and uh, Z Zatara, we would play him and Devil Dino together. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I was sure. playing it with uh, I, I Renee remember. Tilly, the one that could carry people. Oh, she's also good. The prob anywhere on the map is pretty cool too. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless of yeah, range and line of fire, what a what a champ. Let's see. On Facebook here, we've got Tristan Campo says animal, monster, and celebrity. Mystical is good too, although they killed the team ability. That is like, it's weird that some people get the mystical keyword and not the mystical, uh, the mystics team ability. Um, I guess I can see how you could be like mystical, but not necessarily like mystics. Mystic? No, know. that you said it kind of weird. Yeah. So, in a way of like an actual magic user type of deal. So let's say like Wendigo, for example, the power that grants Wendigo to be Wendigo is like a mystical thing. They themselves aren't like a magic person. Is that right? That's yeah. How they go around? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, so, no, I'm just going to say I'm really glad that he mentioned animal and I'm just really glad that the animal ATA is left in golden age. Because yeah. not that it was like overly busted, but Good, like though. generic keywords should not have ATAs that boost them, especially in like modern stuff. I can't imagine if if you could give like cosmic or uh, I don't know 
I, I guess I would anything. disagree just by saying, okay, so we take away like cosmic and mystical, right? I would disagree because already, because they are a generic keyword, they inherently, you know, you would think inherently have less synergy. So it seems all right to give them a ETA. They already have less synergy in general. Yeah. I just, I think uh, when it, I like it as a theme at like a thematic kind of like thing. I like the theme of playing like animals that have that ATA because it makes sense for like animals. I think it's like something that gets rid of shape change on like a certain role. Um, what I don't like about it is that not necessarily animal animals, not the right one, but like, let's say like monster teams, like circa 2018, 2019, when you had all the retaliators and stuff, if there was an ATA you could have slapped on them, that would have been like, uh, gets like plus one attack when adjacent to another monster, like just something silly like that. It would have been very unnecessary. And I guess it does. ATAs typically did rack up the points really quick when everyone had the keyword. So maybe it wouldn't have been as bad as I'm thinking. Right on. Uh, am I next up on Twitter? I believe. Yeah. Let's see Twitter and then the last Discord. And we'll call it a day for this one. Right now, we have quite a few people were saying like soldiers. So I'll go with one kind of between that. And Little Plastic Superhero says it is a tie between mystical and soldier. We both talked about how good those two are. So yeah. All right. And last on Discord is Superfan Organus. Uh, Good old Robin Cave says, I got into this game through Yu-Gi-Oh, so it shouldn't surprise anyone to see me prefer Mystical, an abundance of perplexed probability control and overall trickiness. I love mixing as many licenses together as I can, and Mystical is one of the more universal keywords. Just about any superpowered thing will involve something magical. Obvious rival with Scientist, which tends to have a bit more tricks but less dice control. Which is an interesting point, uh... Scientist keyword tends to be more perplex outwit and less prob and uh, like TK kind of things. Of course, there's like some crossover because what is it as a uh, Tony Stark or whoever in the MCU puts it like any tech that's like so far advanced ends up looking like magic or whatever because he doesn't believe that Thor is magical. Sure. Something like right. that. I don't know. Yeah. It's from somewhere. All right. Well, that was in the community Tuesday's question. Thank you guys so much for answering on all those different platforms. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Let's go ahead and do a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. This is a very interesting one. Certainly a uh, purely casual tip here, guys. Uh, if one player says it's this way and the other player says it's that way, if neither of you can make or find a ruling and to save time, simply roll for it. A four through six, it goes ahead. A one through three, it doesn't. He says, this has worked for me since 2002. So yeah, if you're just playing a game with your bro and if it's casual, especially if it's golden, there are so many weird hero clicks intricacies that like you might not have an answer for anymore, especially if they didn't never get errated in golden age and everything. So most of the time, I'm pretty passive on my stance of something because, like, since it's a friendly game, I don't really care if I win or lose. So I'll normally just be like, oh, whatever, go ahead. But that, that kind of comes with the caveat of, like, you'll let me sort of do something and you won't, like, fight me tooth and nail about it. But if for some reason you play with real argumentative types, go ahead, roll a d6. Just be like, hey, man, let's just roll through six. Go for it. One through three. No. Oh. It seems like a fairly decent way of resolving any potential conflict in a friendly game. Obviously, in a tournament setting, uh, ask, call for a judge. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's the big caveat is uh, yeah. in case of like Worlds, <laughs> Nationals, uh, what a WizKid Open, ROC States, whatever, um, hopefully you've got a judge on hand that you can just ask instead. But I agree. Keep the gameplay going. Um, if it's something that like is you know, an actual point of contention and they're like, no, you can't flurry blades. You can't, it's going to kill me. I hate it. Don't do it. I mean, maybe your local venue has a judge. Um, hero clicks as a whole is 
hard to find solid answers online because yeah. the, like the rules changes. If you are Googling any kind of WizKids rule or any kind of Heroclix rules, uh, it'll have to be like 2017 and further up. Even then, if it's on like HC Realms, if it's like a thread on HC Realms, there's a chance that it's not correct. And there's also a chance that it's been like errated or something since it got posted. So yeah. keep that in mind, especially with Golden Age figures. Their wording is not the same as modern stuff. So if you go back far enough and you look at like comments of how things used to work with somebody, um, it's like, sure, like they used to be able to like precision strike triple target and somebody in the comments will be like i love triple targeting precision strike what a good character and then you're like see it says right here that's not true no i'm sorry it's it's not anymore good job simian thank you good job. thank you <laughs> appreciate it all right <laughs> okay uh jeez <laughs> i'm sorry uh moving on i'm very tired guys my bad i'm like i've been like going over my speeches just everywhere today uh, let's go into a Malcolm Rush question block. That's in Japan! Japan? No, 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 no. I can't go to Japan. Speaking of something that's not going to help me talk quite correctly. Um, over the years, Heroclix has updated uh, Heroclix characters, dial and sculptures, items, relics, and maps. Remember, some things uh, get updated. They change their name from their original name. So, you know, that's maybe true. if yeah. there is an updated, uh, you know, Punisher, it'll be the Punisher. <laughs> Right. Or if more it's like name dark changes phoenix than that, it might be dark phoenix cyclops could be uh, yeah you know uh, it's not no nah, it's not the same that's not <laughs> the same you know that's not right. all right so number one which updated here whose characters items or re relics and maps <sighs> which one all right let me try to, let me try to do this again uh, i'm getting the fit of the giggles i was <laughs> Which updated here with characters, items, relics, and maps is better than the original version, and why? Simeon, do you have do you have a object, character, relic, map, whatever that you think is better than the original? Now, this is really subjective. So, like, what is the original version? That could be the Infinity Challenge version, the very first version of the figure ever made. I think I'm going to kind of say version that I consider to either be legit the first or... um the one that stands out the most. So if we would say, you know, I really think a certain Captain America is better than Smokey Foot Cap, you know, like make it a character that is like, oh yeah, offhand, I know what that character does. I know how that character is good. And it's, it's okay. You think that's the one that is an improvement or worse than like every Captain America since Smokey Foot Cap is basically worse than Smokey Foot Cap. It's like <laughs> how you would use that. Not, not necessarily. Yeah. No, but as a Captain America fan, I think I can make that conclusion. Anyways. Yeah, so I based mine off it. of a character that was like a clear recreation. It was like an obvious recreation of an original figure. So I went with the Nightmare. So originally appearing in, in Infinity Challenge, uh, they remade it. Um, the exact same everything in uh, the universe set. And then, of course... Uh, similar very similar dial got recreated in 2019 with the le kit um that was nightmare dweller in the darkness and something else i can't really remember but i'm sure it was great um but the nightmare his biggest thing in my opinion like probably the coolest thing that like pops out to you is for a figure that came out in let's see the very first set so 2002 he has Maybe. a 14 printed attack top dial and he never goes below a 10 his 10 on his last two clicks um he's got a lot of like 13s 12s 11s he just has a super stacked dial as far as attack goes he came in at 163 points in his first two iterations uh they remade him in the amazing spider-man but that's not the same it's the same guy it's just not like a recreation like the newest one was. And so the newest one copied his top dial 14 and his second click 13 and then 12, 11, 10. But uh, it does dip down on his last two clicks where he's got a nine and an eight. And he's also quite a clicks, quite a few clicks shorter. Um, and he's only, let's see, about 30, 
No, not even that. He's 28 points cheaper in this newest edition, and he has Indom because that's a thing now. Um, so I think they, they made him better. They gave him, of course, uh, the Mystic's team ability is now a thing. So well, since Infinity Challenge and Universe, uh, Mystic's yeah. team ability became a thing. Um, so they gave him that. Invincible became a thing. So he has that top dial. He has seven range instead of zero. Um, still the 14 in cap. It's like it's still not a figure that I love because it just has so many faults in my opinion. Um, but he also has like a trait. He's got a special speed power. The original one had no speed power at all. And then en- enhancement his like half of his dial, which never really made sense to me for a figure with no range why he would have enhancement, but uh, the new one kind of makes up for that with, you know, having, like, more to do with, like, himself kind of thing. And so, yeah, I think they they improved a lot on that. Uh, there's a few things I didn't like about it that I liked about the older one. Of course, dial length in older figures is always better. And then I also put down the Mandarin rings as far as relics slash resources go. I like the wording on objects now. I don't like how you had to roll for relics it almost always made it more more sensible to play like the resource rather than like sitting and spending two turns trying to equip something. So I really like all of the Mandarin rings that are out now. I don't think I'll ever use half of them, but I do like the fact that they also made a Mandarin that can just have them all like on his card technically. So that's really yeah. cool. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of like stuff about the rings that I like the fact that even though you're limited to three things technically on your starting force, um, you can equip two rings, even if like you're just, you know, big Tony from down the block or whatever, you can have two rings. I like that. Probably my favorite update is going to have to be, and I think this is like one of the best glow ups too, is going to be meal near. Going from a super hard chance of needing a six uh, to roll and get Mjolnir to uh, a power action for literally anyone to be worthy of Thor's hammer, but okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then Thor's hammer being crazy good with the close attacks from range and all the stat mods that you get. So yeah, I think Mjolnir is probably the one thing where it's like the update is quite substantial, I would say. I don't know if we ever got into this, but Exospecs has more qualifiers than Mjolnir. You have to be at least 30 points and a standard uh, put on yeah, a pair of thirty points to put on the exospecs, but to wield the power of Mjolnir in uh, 2017 to 2019, all you had to do is be able to stand on something and equip it live. Yeah. Or have a quite literally a monkey dressed as Batman, drop it off for you. Then you could uh, pick it up. Oh, that yeah. funny. Remember, remember that the, the old oh, bat ape uh, sidestep super strength trade. Uh, yep. Good times, times, times. So next up is what is a newer version of something that was old? It's way worse. Where you're like, ah man, why even bother remaking it if you're gonna make it this terrible? Like the opposite of a glow up. Go up if you would. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Go for it, Simeon. So I originally put down Fire Lord because um, when mm. they were first talking That's about valid. the one, I was like really thinking of like some way to like recapture what he originally did, and there's nothing about him that that really does that in my opinion. But he is okay. Um, I also said the this is kind of a cop out, but. Uh, the Dark Phoenix X-Men Wolverine is worse than almost every other Wolverine. Yeah. I continue to agree than every other Wolverine. Especially yeah. since we had the XXS one for 50 points with so much more stuff. Oh, that was insane. Oh, yeah. Right on. Well, what I thought got way worse was... The very first resource we had, which was the Infinity Gauntlet, to what it is now, uh, purely as like the 30-point objects, 
where I believe it was like 50 points. I don't remember how much the Infinity Gauntlet resource was. I never actually owned one. But uh, playing against it, you're like, dude, this thing is insane. Ramping up the Gauntlet really didn't take too long uh, to get it at full power. Versus now, instead, we have one Gauntlet that will just hurt you for picking a power. Then one where you can choose some powers to be defensively good against and then have power cosmic, which is like, okay. So besides on their respective figures or characters that can start with it for half the points, the 30 point gauntlets are just not as good as the old infinity gauntlet. Not to say they don't have their own uses, but I would say certainly not a great updated version, especially when it's been so long since we had infinity gauntlet and this is their return to hero clicks. Yeah. And uh, comparatively they're, they're only 10 points cheaper. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Three points. Yeah, like clicking points. up the Infinity Gauntlet, you got like a power for each gem, which was kind of cool. And honestly, I don't know if there's a real way. I think a few people have like figured out ways to technically do it in a game, but if you can just equip all the gems, like you get the ego gem, and then you just equip all the other gems, it's yeah, infinitely that's actually better than better. the two new Infinite Infinity Gauntlets. Yeah. Yeah. It of course costs way more, but. Like the gems on their own collected shouldn't be as good as the Infinity Gauntlet, and they are right. so way better. All right, number three: which updated hero whose characters, items, relics, and maps are just about the same? Yeah, I just said like you could list every character, any character that is like a mainstay, like Spider Man, Batman, Superman, whatever. Um, Typically, most sets will just have, like, a lot of commons and uncommons that are just, like, okay. They're not going to blow me away. I'm sure they're better because of power creep. I'm sure that their dials, like, have a little bit more oomph to them. They probably have, like, better powers and whatever. But as far as something that I'm going to, like, reach for, it's usually, like, you know, your number 001 Spider-Man or 001 Captain America or iron man or whatever they usually get like the short end of the stick when it comes to updates because they get updated so often that there's not really like a specific thing that they're going for each time it's just kind of whatever random thing like the newest spider-man he has leap climb sidestep passenger one and precision strike he can't even charge yeah it is pretty lame I think what kind of stayed the same um, was actually your answer. Uh, your first answer was the Mandarin rings. I think the Mandarin rings on the power battery are just as good as the Mandarin rings all on the Mandarin or kind of by themselves picking and choosing which Mandarin ring you want to do. I think they're really powerful. And on the power battery, they were really good, especially like burning a ring if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. Just, you know, a few other things. So I really liked the battery. Or, sorry, not a power battery. It's power the plant. Uh, yeah, power plants. Yeah, thank you. Power plant. So I think the power plant rings, and then versus just the normal ones, being able to be better relics. You know, like as relics, the manager rings weren't good at all. I just I don't think I don't like anything with that chance. Is awful. But like versus the power battery, and then you can have three on your team or put all of them on the Mandarin. I think the manager rings are pretty cool. No, I like it a lot. I like how also in the same time we got one Mandarin that could start with like two of them and then one that can have all of them or any combination of them at all. Right. Which is insane. So very, very funny how like that planning happened. So yeah, I think the Mandarin rings overall just kind of came out to being pretty much even. Uh, number four, which hero whose characters, items, or relics, and maps need a major update since their last time that item was, uh, was made? How would you like to, to see it updated? Okay, so I think I've already like mentioned this at some point, but uh, the DC version of Ares has only been made twice, and he's been kind of awful both times. So both times he was two hundred seventy-five, uh, well, two hundred seventy-five and two hundred seventy-two. Uh, the original one from the Legacy set, like Nightmare, had a fourteen attack top dial. He had phasing instead of just nothing, but um, super strength, impervious, five damage without wit, 
Mystics. He's pretty cool for 275 points. Of course, nowadays you can just outwit him and burn through his reducers. And since he doesn't have movement attack top dial, he probably just never really gets like a big hit off. Um, and then the updated one was a 12 attack with a 10 speed charge. They dropped his range by half. He originally had eight. Now he's got five in the 75th anniversary one. He was still 272 points. And they fixed the fact that he didn't have quintessence the first time around because he kind of needed it. He kind of needed some sort of protected outwit. They also dropped his defense values and, uh, got rid of some of his like damage powers and stuff but i think if they update him they base it off of the very first one i think i like the the legacy one so we saw a con aries before all cons were canceled we saw a con aries and my great hope was that he was going to be done up like nightmare where they would still give him that 14 super strength and then like 13 13 whatever make his dial like less length uh, drop his point cost by quite a bit because if they, let's just be honest, whiz kids, you can't make a good like three hundred ish figure. Anything over two hundred fifty is probably way over costed. So just if you build a figure that's two hundred fifty and you look at it and you're like, yeah, this is good, go ahead and just cut it in half. And one twenty five is probably the real cost that you should put it at. So <laughs> let's say they make this guy for one hundred twenty five points. And he's still got, like, you know, 12 speed charge, 8 range, 14 attack, uh, 19 defense, 5 damage. That's an Ares I'd play. I mean, let's not give him a stop click or make him, like, super crazy. But I think, like, as an opening attacker who still has to, like, close the gap, he's got to, like, charge up in there, whatever. I think that, like, a 14 is pretty solid, like... Uh, we haven't seen that much stuff out of the Ultron that has a 14. We definitely haven't seen anything out of that um, Nightmare with a 14. So I think if you remake Ares, I mean, even like 200 points, if you build it right, like it'd have to be like Dark Side, in my opinion. The 200 point Dark Side is a pretty cool figure. But the whole like big point guy that can phase anywhere, it's like, that's really cool. It's super cool that he can just, like, phase up next to somebody. What's not cool is that there's no follow-up, and he just gets, like, pummeled. So it's like, yeah, I can phase 12, but then I just stand there. And if they don't move next to me or into my line of fire, then I just don't do anything until I phase again. Or until they, like, you know, actually come at me. And at that point, it gives them the advantage. So, yeah. DC Ares, give him some move and attack. Give him something like Dark Side, something that like protects him, and then an item. I'd really like them to make a like tank turret again, like some sort of oh, yeah. heavy object that not necessarily is like can't be destroyed with object attacks, but maybe you get like two or three object attacks out of it. It'd be cool to pay like five points for an object that like your opponent could TK it, but it only like takes like one counter off of its card and you've got like two left or something. And so you could still pick it up and hit him with it. Yeah. That used to be like my go-to object to the tank turn right up until like they made ultra heavies, just like a normal thing. I'm like, Oh, now they're gone again. So like, yeah, you could theoretically make like another tank turn like object, which is pretty funny. I, what did I write down? It's number four. I think an update, it would have to go with a character whose first time was incredibly lackluster, and that would be Killer Moth. He needs an update as soon as he came out. He was trash. He was terrible. Make him fun and make him wacky. So, like, in the same set, they made... This isn't the same set, I guess. This is a set later, but... Other character that is kind of the same way, a lame Batman villain, but that has a cult following, is like Kite Man. Kite Man does his job. He's a dude with a kite. He can fly. He can carry two people. He's effective. He's cheap. He makes sense. Killer Moth is way too many points. Like, he should be 40 points, like 25 points less at the very least for that dial. If not, like, 35 points like less. You've got a Mary Jane that's 15 yeah. points and can make three in cappers with better yeah. stats. 
top dial than this guy. Killer Moth so badly needs a, a remake. Like, just it sucks that like we we were so excited to finally get him, and they made him so terrible. So, yeah, Killer t- Killer Moth needs a remake like crazy. More more so than I think a lot of characters. Yeah, and give uh, him like five. some, give him some flavor. Give him like a trait oh, or something yeah. that like, like actually. Like he's just got standard the powers. Like, sure, the freaking, flavor text like, is fun, but Mobile, my dudes, he has the moth. Like, that's, that's hilarious. You cannot make some of this stuff up. Killer Moth's a great character. He's awesome, and and he done him dirty. He done him dirty, Wiz Kids. Number five, in your opinion, what makes an update of a Heroclix character, item, or relic work or not work? What makes it good? Yeah. Uh, I put... What's a, what's a way to update a character? If they, the, the way that you can really mess up an update is if you don't update it to be like in line with the current state of play or like the, the current point costs. So I'll go back to Nightmare, who I think they got half right and i really liked the update that they did but um i think some of the things that they missed is they didn't give him any protected outwit for 135 points and it's like yeah his stats are cool and you don't want to make him like too powerful that's great but you also gave him in cap and phasing top dial so it's not like he was hitting hard or first anyhow he kind of has to like hang back and hope he doesn't get hit to begin with so they really need to figure out that phasing is not the optimal like movement like power. Phasing is just a hair above like earthbound neutralize when it comes to actually engaging with other like characters. Leap climb, I can at least like punch up an elevation sidestep. I can at least like, you know, move a square around like a corner or something. Um, and then of course you have like hypersonic and all the other ones that are great stealth at least like protects me from range phasing literally just plops me down somewhere where I hope my opponent is not going to hit me before I hit them. And so at least give like the updated characters, if you're going to stick with phasing for like Ares or like one of these deity kind of guys, at least give them some sort of like, uh, serpent society phasing or something where there's a potential that they could use it as an attack because man there's nothing worse than having well geez like that 235 point hades from superman wonder woman he starts with fate yeah he's got 10 range sure but i still have to like position on like an outdoor map with a like, clear line of fire or my opponent just has to be like foolish and just to stand in for like right in front of him otherwise he's not going to get an attack off it's really easy to play around a character with phasing um unless of course it's like dark side or someone that can use phasing to like move half their speed and then attack with phasing or whatever but as far as like top dial i want to keep my character top dial so i need like phasing sidestep or like something that gives me some sort of mobility outside of taking a power action and then being stuck in that position um i guess there's always tk but yeah, that'd be my my suggestion. S- figure out what works in like the current state of play and find like a comparable point cost. And re- remember, WizKids, always remember that modifiers are one of the cheapest things that you give us. There's 15 point scientists that can all have like perplex. I can have like 10 perplex for 150 points. So I can match all of these stats that you think cost all these like stats that you think cost like 200 points I can have on any character with enough perplex and it probably won't even cost nearly as much. So yeah, <laughs> that's my, I'll, I'll pretty much just like agree. Cause I had nothing written down. I was just like, I don't know. Just make them better. Um, <laughs> that was like my, my thought, I guess. Number six, so I'll answer first on this one. Which hero host characters, items, relics, maps, blah, 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 that have never been updated should should get updated, and how would you like it to be updated? So there's only, this is a keyword that I love. I love playing it, and I like playing it because it is a bad-named keyword. But only one character on this team has gotten an update, and now even the update of her 
isn't that great. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, you know I'm talking about one of my all-time favorite squirrel-related characters in comics, and that is, of course, Squirrel Girl slash the entire Great Lakes Avengers. So I love the Great Lakes Avengers. Uh, their latest run in comics is absolute trash garbage. Please don't read it. It is terrible, and I hate it, and I, I wish they would have just stayed dead instead of making that pitiful excuse for a run it is everything about new comics that i hate and we're not going to talk about it anyways i really like the great lakes avengers i love the original run i love all of the crossovers they had in the 90s 80s with the west coast avengers with hawkeye and mockingbird like those are some of my favorite issues i own of west coast avengers so i love the great lakes avengers They've all only been made once except for squirrel girl they can make good don't die tech for a mortal man instead of being this trash you know they can make you know flat man slightly better i think flat man and big birth are actually like okay they're not they're they do what they can do and that's fine but i wouldn't mind more synergy for them like being on the team there's really nothing they have that makes them like ah i should play them on a great lakes avengers team except for the fact that it's like the only named keyword a lot of them have you know like nothing makes them work together as a team so I would really like, well, except for Dinosaur. I guess that's about the only one because you can carry a bunch of them. Uh, that's about the only one that works. But like, I really want, I really want a new Great Lakes Avengers uh, just set of figures, you know? Like, and don't, you can make them have bad stats too. Like, and even the latest Squirrel Girl for 85 points gets down to like a 15 defense, one damage, nine attack. You no, know? a nine attack. Is the majority of her attacks on her dial too by the way it's, it's rough i know she has stat mods whatever but still like i really want the great lakes avengers more than any other like keyword to be remade i i would really love it mostly just because mortal man's one of my favorite characters of all time it's just really fun he's great and he should be better than what he is like being like legit awesomely immortal and stuff like he should have a power he should have a lot of cool powers and i'm not going to talk about him on air but like I really want a new immortal man. He was the first rare I ever pulled and the first booster of hero hooks I ever got. So I'm like, I'm really connected to him. I think he's great. So I want new great lakes Avengers overall. If anything deserves to be an update, it is to put them all in one set, let them all be modern at the same time and just make us a great lake Avengers team. That's what I want. All right. That's it. All right. What do you, what do you want? What do you I'm think needs say, to be updated more than anything? I really want a new alpha flight. So, Alpha Flight uh, hasn't been fully made. Uh, really, it hasn't been fully made like at one time ever. But the best it like ever got was when Invincible Iron Man came out, and they had most of like the mainstays in there. Currently, and like even like even including like some older sets. Uh, currently, there's only four figures with the Alpha Flight keyword, and two of them are Wolverine with the same sculpt. Well, no, one's one's the deep cut, and one's from X Men Animated. Uh, they gave us Vindicator, Aurora, and North Star in an LE kit back in 2016, but I'm sorry, like Vindicator needs like I don't I honestly don't care about Vindicator or Guardian. It's the I don't care about the leader of the Alpha Flight. I want Puck. I want Shaman. I want a Sasquatch that isn't embarrassing to pull out of a booster. The Sasquatch that like yeah. they gave us is I get that he was like the uncommon, but like compared to Wendigo, it's just like for the points and everything about it, it's just awful. Um there's no synergy in any of like the current Alpha Flight stuff. Captain Marvel, the super rare, is Alpha Flight. Doesn't make any sense. She doesn't, like, have any synergy with, like, Alpha Flight. I mean, it makes sense why she has the keyword. Up at the end, the comics or something. Yeah, it, it makes sense why she has the keyword. It just doesn't make sense, like, if I'm playing an Alpha Flight team, I'm not putting her on there because, I mean, like, the original Guardian gives a plus one attack when there's, like, a alpha flight keyword team and then uh you can use like carry ability and stuff like that so like when i use like actual the actual like invincible iron man alpha flight figures i feel like i'm playing an actual alpha flight team even if i'm playing the like awful snowbird or puck or whatever like i mean yeah. depends on which puck i play but 
yeah, like having a Wolverine with 13 attack on my Alpha Flight team actually makes me feel like I've got a chance. That actually like feels like a somewhat decent team that I've built, even though it's kind of like worthless like as a whole. Um, but yeah, it'd be really cool to get an updated Shaman that like plays to the ways the old one did. Um, it'd be cool to get. I mean, either Guardian or Vindicator. I don't really care which. They're the same, but um, it's the suit that does all this stuff, so who really cares? Uh, it's like their version of Iron Man, except worse. Aurora and North Star, like, they gotta give me something better than what they did in this LE set. Like, it... I get that they're twins, and they have to be around each other to work, but man... You gotta, you gotta do a little bit better than having like weird swapped dials for defenses and the whole like protected pulse wave thing. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's a keyword that I really like. And if I go back in Golden Age, I've got way more options than if I go forward in Modern. There's almost nothing in like the last like five years that's worth putting on those teams there's the uncanny x-men's wolverines had it avengers infinity had someone i've never even heard of but i'm sure she was a part of it at some point um and the worst part was like she turned into somebody that was the the her figure that could turn into um what was her name i don't remember she turned into someone else and that character didn't have the keyword. And it was weird that they gave it to... Was it Kismet? I don't remember. Um, it was weird that they gave it to one of them and not the other. And, yeah. They just really need to revisit some of these. Also, the kid keyword should come back. That has nothing uh, to should, do with anything. But should hit. Why? they really need to bring back the kid keyword. Oh. And uh, oh. indie sets. Wrong. Wrong. Just wrong. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, indie sets, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad, guys. I was just on a <laughs> I default setting, just disliking Simeon's thoughts and opinions. Um, the indie set can come back, sure. All right. That's enough about that. I think we done diddly talked enough. Hero clicks for one night. So thank you so much, Malcolm, for sending us those questions. Alex, for Hero Clicks, you can listen to us on Podbean, Spotify, however you're listening to us right now podcast whatever it is and whatever you listen to us on go ahead and leave us a review that really helps us out let's uh if you enjoy the show let's other people see that the show exists when they like search for it and stuff so definitely leave us a review it really helps us out you have no idea check us out on twitter at dial h4 that's the number four hero clicks twitter uh, facebook.com slash dial h for hero clicks e our email if you want to send us questions like malcolm did you can either send that through dms in like Facebook and Twitter is fine. Or if you also want to email us, feel a little professional there. It's dial H4, F-O-R-E, uh, F-O-R, F-O-R-E, F-O-R, uh, heroclicks at gmail.com. Uh, you can go ahead and support us on Patreon if you want to. Big shout out to our $10 patrons, Lucas, Tom, Ringo, Star, Van Holland, and Kevin Nelson. Really appreciate the support, my guys. And honorary super fans, Malcolm Rush, Christian Bogan, Larry Slate, and Seth Aaron. And our normal super fans, Aaron Lloyd, Loyal Miller, Organist, Ben Jones, Mock Taskmaster. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. We give away cool Dial H Action Tokens stickers. And I'm going to make something where if you donate like $25 a month, I'll give you guys a, a t-shirt. I found out a better way to make t-shirts. So if you want a t-shirt, you can join. You can just join one month at $25 a month. I'll send out a t-shirt and some tokens, which is really cool. Uh, and now these dice I'll probably be giving away uh, on our like Patreon giveaways. I have not announced what we'll be giving away for this month. Uh, more than likely, it's going to be some super rares and then a full set of commons, maybe a full set of uncommons from the latest Spider-Man set. So I'll, I'll for sure giving away the rest of my super rares and then the rest of my rare rares from the Spider-Man uh, cases that I got for our Patreon giveaway this month. I just haven't made a post about it because I am lazy. Uh, that is all I have to say. Oh, and our YouTube channel. That is not all I had to say. Check out our YouTube channel. We do a lot of great stuff over there. Uh, if you enjoy, you know, you have five, ten minutes watch some of our unboxings uh but if you also sit at a computer for about an hour and you like to see hero clicks gameplay videos we use uh tabletop simulator which is just a more aesthetically pleasing way of playing hero clicks than roll 20 is uh, argue all you want but amongst yourselves don't bother me with it anyways 
Uh, so yeah, our Thursday throwdowns are great. Probably the best part is the fact that you get to vote for what figures we use. This coming week, we are going to be playing Guardians of the Galaxy 2014 versus Flash. So, you know, both are awesome sets. And around the time when I really started playing more and going to venues, so I, I get to play at a Guardians of the Galaxy. Simeon is building out a Flash. Definitely vote for what figures you think are stand out from that set or just figures you enjoyed from that set and want to be played. You can do that on Facebook, Twitter, and in our Discord if you are Patreon members. So thank you guys so much for all your support. Simeon, go ahead and read us out of here, my man. Yeah, Flash was the first set I ever actually bought a blind pack out of. Uh, it was the Gravity Feed, and I pulled Max Mercury, the iconic DC character that uh, it looks like Elvis with uh, blue aesthetics. And if you want a Max Mercury, you can check out our sponsor, their CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day from the latest Heroclix sealed and pre-order and uh, singles to like a Max Mercury or whatever else might tickle your fancy. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Uh, Max Mercury is currently going for 25 cents at CoolStuffInc.com or 49 cents if you want the Gravity Feed version or 35 cents if you want the Brave and the Bold uncommon. Honestly, that's uh, the better very one. In- the Brave and the Bold. It's the better one. Speed by three. It's, it's really cool. kind of he's kind of intimidating me right now. To be honest with you, like, the way he's standing there, he's, he looks really intimidating in Brave and the Bold more so than either Flash set. Make sure you use code uh, right, Dial5, right. though, because none of those are worth the price. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Right 5% now. off. That's what you really need. All right. Uh, and as always, no one is above the law. Mutt, 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 mutt